Hello there. Welcome to SSIS online class where your potentials are nurtured and strengthened. This is Sir Tony marching on to teach empowerment technologies. How are you today, students? I hope all of you are okay. Before we begin, let us pause for a short prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for your great love and amazing grace. Please be with us in our class discussion today. Enlighten us to understand our lessons well, and bless us, Lord, and keep us safe always. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, class, let's proceed to our lesson. As I have said, this class is about empowerment technologies. And our targets to hit for the first syllabus is to be able to compare and contrast the differences of various online platforms, sites, and content to be best to best achieve specific class objectives or address situational challenges. Please have your modules with you while I discuss and follow me through so that you will have a good understanding of our lesson today. As you can see in your module, you have there your targets to hit. Those are what I would be expecting from you to know after what after we finish this lesson. Then uh, let me share with you my screen for our PowerPoint presentation. So again, the subject is empowerment technology. As an introduction, please watch this short video about ICT or Information Communications Technology.
sabi any tech queries, you can just leave a comment on the uh, So you saw in the video how important ICT is. It has almost become a necessity. So from our personal shopping, we do it. We use it in medicine, in hospitals, in business, even in military. So ICT is that important. So that's why we have to study empowerment, study it in empowerment technologies. So here are some questions to ponder after watching the video. How many times have you checked your phone this morning? How many status updates have you posted in FB, Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter today? Did you use internet for an hour after you woke up this morning? Do you follow a celebrity via his or her social media account? Have you ever done online shopping recently from online stores like Shopee, Lazada, and etc.? So these questions uh, are evidences that we, we use the internet almost every day and has become part of our life. Again, our targets to hit for this uh, syllabus is to compare and contrast the differences of various online platforms, sites, and content to best achieve specific class objectives or address situational challenges. What is ICT? UNESCO or the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization defines ICT as a diverse set of the technological tools and resources used to transmit, store, create, share or exchange information. These technological tools and resources include computers, the internet, live broadcasting technologies, recorded broadcasting technologies, and telephony. The term ICT is also generally accepted to mean all technologies, devices, networking components, applications, and systems that combine allow people and organizations to interact in the digital world. Information technology has been around for a long, long time, basically as long as people have been around. Information technology has been around because there were always ways of communicating through technology available at that point in time. So let's discuss a, a brief history of ICT. So in 1837, Samuel Morse independently developed a patent and patented a recording electric telegraph. So this device is the telegraph. Next, in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. So this is how the first telephone looked like. In 1895, Guglielmo Marconi invented the wireless telegraph. So this is the first telegraph. In 1926, Marconi developed also the shortwave radio. 1946, a more reliable high frequency microwave radio overcame the physical constraint of connecting every point by wire or cable. So, we have, uh, we have started to do communication wirelessly using this. In 1957, the development of satellites and, and space communication has started. In the 70s, mobile communication handsets were developed, as was the basic technology foundation for the internet and World Wide Web. So these are the first computers where the internet and World Wide Web was created. In the 1980s, both mobile and internet communication were introduced and have grown rapidly. In the 1990s up to the 2000s, technological convergence brought together what were previously separate communication media like voice telephone, radio, TV, 
newspapers, and computer data into one medium, the internet, provided over enhanced high-capacity broadband telecommunication networks. As ICT have continued to improve and the internet has expanded to near universal coverage in most developed countries, software-based network or SDN applications are being developed and applied far beyond the information and communication industries. The succeeding video tells you more about SDN. So what is SDN? In recent years, software-defined networking, or SDN, has emerged as the next big thing in the networking industry. Given all the hype, where are we now? Researchers at Stanford are credited with creating the idea of bringing the tenets of virtualization to networking and thus creating the software-defined networking market. Traditional networking uses integrated hardware and software to direct traffic across a series of routers and switches. The original use case for SDN was to virtualize the network by separating the control plane that manages the network from the data plane where traffic flows. There is a smart controller running specialized software that manages all network traffic in the data center and a series of routers and switches that forward packets of traffic. Virtualizing the network comes with advantages. Networks can be spun up and down dynamically, they can be fine-tuned for specific application use cases, and security policies can be installed on each individual network. Today, the SDN market has evolved, and it's breaking out of the data center. SDN is being used in the wide area network to control how enterprises connect to their branch offices. This use case, called SD-WAN, uses software to aggregate multiple types of network connections, such as broadband, MPS, LS or wireless to create strong and cost-effective connections. Micro-segmentation is the idea of using SDN for security. Certain networks can be ultra-secure and carry sensitive data. Other networks can be public-facing. So, if a hacker gets into a public-facing web server, they are restricted to the server segment of the network. This limits the hacker's ability to access any other segments such as secure data center networks. SDN is also used in an area called Network Function Virtualization, or NFV. This is the idea of replacing specialized hardware like firewalls and load balancers with software running on off-the-shelf server hardware. Some vendors are using SDN to connect data centers to public cloud providers, creating a hybrid cloud network that includes micro-segmentation or dynamic scaling abilities. Other SDNs could be used to help manage the deluge of traffic from the Internet of Things, segmenting network traffic and helping to organize the data. SDN has a oh. Okay. Let's uh, play that video again about our SDN. In recent years, software-defined networking, or S. In recent years, software-defined networking, or SDN, has emerged as the next big thing in the networking industry. Given all the hype, where are we now? Researchers at Stanford are credited with creating the idea of bringing the tenets of virtualization to networking and thus creating the software-defined networking market. Let's play our video again about SDN. In recent years, software-defined networking, or SDN, has emerged as the next big thing in the networking industry. Given all the hype, where are we now? Researchers at Stanford are credited with creating the idea of bringing the tenets of virtualization to networking and thus creating the software-defined networking market. 
Traditional networking uses integrated hardware and software to direct traffic across a series of routers and switches. The original use case for SDN was to virtualize the network by separating the control plane that manages the network from the data plane where traffic flows. There is a smart controller running specialized software that manages all network traffic in the data center and a series of routers and switches that forward packets of traffic. Virtualizing the network comes with advantages. Networks can be spun up and down dynamically, they can be fine-tuned for specific application use cases, and security policies can be installed on each individual network. Today, the SDN market has evolved, and it's breaking out of the data center. SDN is being used in the wide area network to control how enterprises connect to their branch offices. This use case Oh, yeah, uh, called SD-WAN, uses software to aggregate multiple... Okay, I'm sorry for that. Okay, let's play the video again about SDN or Software Defined Network. Okay, let's go back to the video about SDN. Okay, let's go back to our video about what is SDN. In recent years, software-defined networking, or SDN, has emerged as the next big thing in the networking industry. Given all the hype, where are we now? Researchers at Stanford are credited with creating the idea of bringing the tenets of virtualization to networking and thus creating the software-defined networking market. Traditional networking uses integrated hardware and software to direct traffic across a series of routers and switches. The original use case for SDN was to virtualize the network by separating the control plane that manages the network from the data plane where traffic flows. There is a smart controller running specialized software that manages all network traffic in the data center and a series of routers and switches that forward packets of traffic. Virtualizing the network comes with advantages. Networks can be spun up and down dynamically, they can be fine-tuned for specific application use cases, and security policies can be installed on each individual network. Today, the SDN market has evolved, and it's breaking out of the data center. SDN is being used in the wide area network to control how enterprises connect to their branch offices. This use case, called SD-WAN, uses software to aggregate multiple types of network connections such as broadband, MPLS, or wireless to create strong and cost-effective connections. Micro-segmentation is the idea of using SDN for security. Certain networks can be ultra-secure and carry sensitive data. Other networks can be public-facing. So, if a hacker gets into a public-facing web server, they are restricted to the server segment of the network. This limits the hacker's ability to access any other segments such as secure data center networks. SDN is also used in an area called Network Function Virtualization, or NFV. This is the idea of replacing specialized hardware like firewalls and load balancers with software running on off-the-shelf server hardware. Some vendors are using SDN to connect data centers to public cloud providers, creating a hybrid cloud network that includes micro-segmentation or dynamic scaling abilities. Other SDNs could be used to help manage the deluge of traffic from the Internet of Things, segmenting network traffic and helping to organize the data. SDN has evolved from a specific use case to being applied to many different areas of networking, both within the data center, out to the cloud, and in the new world of IoT. 
As software is used to control the network, it becomes more agile, easier to manage, and it's ready to adapt to whatever use cases emerge in the future. So you have heard what is SDN about. I hope you got the those usage of SDNs as they are very important in the current technology. So moving forward, let's have a brief history of ICT in the Philippines. Slowly, the Philippines has adapted into being an e-government. The electronic government or e-government is the use of information and communication technology and other web-based technology to enhance access of information and improve delivery, efficiency, and effectiveness of services to the public. So during the President Ramos's administration, his policies were the, are the following. In 1994, the National Information Technology Plan 2000 or NITP 2000 was created. And during 1994 and 1998, he signed the Executive Order 190 series of 1994, which amended EO 469 in 1998 and established the National Information Technology Council. So NITC directs the policy, is the policy body in ICT matters in the country during that time. NITC mandated the designation of information system planners in each government agency to take charge. In 1997, the government approved IT21 was formulated. It is the country's action agenda for year 2000 and beyond. It promoted the best practices in ICT governance. It encouraged outsourcing of government ICT projects to promote growth. In 1997, Administrative Order 3332, Directives for Government Agencies Internet Connectivity, was signed. It aims to connect for greater efficiency in communication and data interchange to stimulate the growth of Philippines web, thereby strengthening the role of telecommunication systems, network, and communication services, content management, and applications to provide better services. It was meant to develop the Philippines Information Infrastructure Framework. Next, during the Estrada administration, his policies are, during 2000, he signed the Electronic Commerce Act, which defines the government's policies on e-commerce and electronic transactions. It recognizes the electronic evidence as admissible in court. Also in the same year, the Government Information System Plan or GISP 2000 framework was established under the Executive Order 265 Series 2000. It, it involves the computer, computerization key frontline and common government services and operation. Also in that same year, Estrada's administration created the Information Technology and E-Commerce Council or ITECC. It was the partnership between public and private sectors for IT and e-commerce matters. And also ISP.com strategy was implemented. The next administration is President Arroyos. During her administration in 2004, she established the Commission on ICT, a de facto of DICT. CICT formulated the roadmap of the Philippines. 2004 to 2010, she placed ICT as a priority in its agenda. General Appropriations Act was created. This act establishes an e-government fund as a source of funding for mission-critical, high-impact, and cross-agency government ICT projects. Strengthened Information Technology and E-Commerce Council 
which was created by President Estrada. The next administration is that of Aquino. During Aquino's administration, he abolished CICT, instead moved it, moved IT directives under DOST ICTO, or Information and Communication Technology Office. Minimized red tapes for starting a business, tax holidays for business operating in PESA. PESA is Philippine Export Processing Zone Authority. Signed into law, the bill creating the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT. This department will promote ICT development, institu institutionalize e-government, and manage the country's ICT environment. On May 23, 2016, the department shall be the primary policy planning, coordinating, implementing, and administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan, develop, and promote national ICT development agenda. And the current administration is President Rodrigo Duterte. In his administration, he opened the Philippines to foreign telcos to speed up internet connections. He also developed national broadband plan for the Philippines. The creation of NIPC or National ICT Confederation of the Philippines. And to commit to create 1 million direct jobs and 3 million indirect jobs in the countryside by 2020. The establishment of, of the following was were also done during the third test administration. The nationwide operational assessment of hazards or NOAA. The mobile operational systems for emergency or MOSES. GovPhil or the integrated government Philippine or iGovPhil. ELGU projects, electronic governance in LGUs or local government unit projects. Contact Center ng Bayan or CCB, Philippines Community E-Center, E-Government Philippines, Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth, Personally Controlled Health Records, and the IPNI Program. The Current State of ICT Technologies. Web 2.0. Web 2.0 is the current state of online technology as it compares to the early days of the web, characterized by greater user active in interactivity and collaboration, more pervasive network connectivity, and enhanced connection channels. Differences between Web 2.0 and traditional WWW or Web 1.0. Web 1.0 is a well-known as the first generation of the web, where the primary focus was to build the web processes, web processes, infrastructure, and at the same time, make it more accessible and commercial. It is a mere collection of static electronic brochure, while Web 2.0 encompasses collaboration. Web 2.0 is associated with web applications that facilitate interactive information sharing interoperability, user-centered design, and collaboration on the World Wide Web. Meanwhile, in Web 1.0, data was posted on websites, and users simply viewed or downloaded the content. Increasingly, users have more input into the nature and scope of web content, and in some cases, exert real-time control over it. The social nature of Web 2.0 is another major difference between it and the original static web. Increasingly, websites enable community-based input, interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. Some examples of Web 2.0 are the following. Video hosting, home security surveillance, where you, see you, where you can see your CCTVs on your phone or your laptops. Dating and relationship services, online banking, online radios, 
photo gallery services, sports team organizing, music and file sharing, and many more. To the next topic, Web 3.0. Web 3.0 could be defined as phrase coined by John Markov of the New York Times in 2006. Web 3.0 refers to a supposed third generation of internet-based services that collectively comprise what might be called the intelligent web, such as those using semantic web, 3D graphics, microformats, natural language, data mining, machine learning, recommendation agents, connectivity, and artificial intelligence technologies. Blockchain serves as the foundation for Web 3.0. Since it fixes most of the issues that are problematic in Web 2.0, using blockchain-powered Web 3.0, users have absolute control and ownership over their data. Data transferred through the network will be encrypted, keeping it secure. Blockchain will make the web user user-centric, which will make it user-friendly. Voice recognition software is also becoming a key component of Web 3.0. The main differences between Web 3.0 and Web 1.0 and 2.0 are the following. Web 3.0 is decentralized while Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 is centralized. Web 1.0 and 2.0, their platforms are gradually, gradually expand in their capability to, extend, to extract data from users. On the other hand, the collaborative nature of Web 3.0 and participation of independent developers prioritizes user security. The following are examples of Web 3.0, Apple, Siri, Facebook, Wolfram Alpha, and Bitcoin. The next topic is about convergent technologies. In general, convergence is a coming together of two or more distinct entities or phenomena. Technological convergence is increasingly prevalent in the information technology world. In this context, the term refers to the combination of two or more different technologies in a single device. The five elements of technology convergence. First is technology, then media and content. Next is services application, then robots and machines, and lastly, virtual reality. Here are examples of convergence. Taking pictures with the cell phone, which combines the functionality of a camera and the telephone. Surfing the web on a television, which brings a task normally associated with a computer to a TV. The next topic is social mobile. Technopedia defines social mobile as a social network where people with common interests meet and converse using a mobile phone or a tablet. It is similar to web-based social networks and also makes use of virtual communities with the difference being in the device used. Examples of mobile social networking are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. The next topic is assistive media. Assistive media is a nonprofit internet based radio, radio reading service to serve people with visual and reading impairments. Assistive media was founded in Ann Arbor, Michigan, in 1996 by David Erdody as a nonprofit organization with, a vo with vol volunteer readers began producing and distributing spoken word recordings of otherwise inaccessible materials. Here as an example of, a, of assistive media. Federalist number one, general introduction. 
For the Independent Journal, Saturday, October 27th, 1787. Hamilton, to the people of the state of New York. After an unequivocal experience of the inefficiency of the subsisting federal government, you are called upon to deliberate on a new constitution for the United States of America. The subject speaks its own importance, comprehending in its consequences nothing less than the existence of the Union, the safety and welfare of the parts of which it is composed, the fate of an empire in many respects, the most interesting in the world. It has been frequently remarked. So that is an example of assistive media. So this is usually listened to by the blind people. To summarize, we have learned about what ICT is and a brief background of its history. We have also learned about the World Wide Web and how it has evolved from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 and finally to Web 3.0. We also learned about the convergence in technology. We have also taken up the topics about social media and assistive media. And now let's wrap up. Let's have your terminal key points or the summary of what we have discussed today. We have learned about what ICT is and a brief background of its history. We have also learned about the World Wide Web and how it has evolved from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 and 3.0. We have also learned about the convergence in technology and we have also taken up the topics about social media and assistive media. And that ends our lesson on syllabus one of empowerment technologies. To complete this session and for you to qualify to our next lesson, please answer your tests and tasks, which you can find in the last page of your module. Submit your answered worksheets either directly to the school or take a photo of it after you answer it and send it to me directly to my Facebook Messenger for checking, grading, and recording. Please be honest and conscious of the time frame given, maybe an hour the most, for your task in this lesson. Moreover, if you have questions, clarifications, and the like, please don't hesitate to message me through my cell phone number 0999-697-5806 or PM me through our FB class page, SSIS-SHS-ET or email at espeleta underscore Antonio at SSIS.PH.Education. For better learning, please don't miss our next lesson. Stay blessed and stay safe. Thank you for watching. Once again, this is Sir Tony saying, March on SSIS!